Coming up on this episode of A Girl in the Word podcast. But not really because we're trying to keep it real, right? Yeah. So part one of a three-part series. Mm-hmm. So um, provide a lot of spiritual truths. And I just think you can't do that in one episode. Oh, and I felt like God was just speaking to me, telling me, it's time, girl. Like, it's tell you that. I had never been on a plane by myself, um, let alone, like, I didn't even have a passport. I only went over there with, like, 200 pounds in my pocket. And if you don't feel like I met God for the first time face to face. Uh, But there was this one night I had a dream that was so vivid and so clear that I actually woke up and I thought that it had happened. To be honest with you, I barely survived those first few weeks. Um, And right before I got paid, I had about $8 in my bank account. Hi, welcome to A Girl in the Word podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee, a blogger, growth marketing manager, and now podcast producer. I'm a lover of all things coffee, houseplants, and Jesus, and I actually have my coffee with me this morning. Uh, I have this like weird tickle in my throat, so if I take a drink, apologies, Um, but not really because we're trying to keep it real, right? So anyways, in this episode, I want to talk about faith, Um, but I really, I want this to be part one of a three-part series, so um, stick around because... I really want to dive deep into the subject. I don't want it to be so surface level. I want to um, provide a lot of spiritual truths, and I just think you can't do that in one episode, so I'm going to split it out into three. Um, So stick around if this is something you want to learn more about or um, grow deeper in, Um, so there's more to come. But before I jump into like you know, what faith is or um, the Bible verse, the Bible like uh, book and chapter we're going to talk about today. I want to tell you my personal experience with faith um, because I have these three distinct instances in my mind that I want to share with you. And if you'll listen closely to them, you'll see how they kind of stack up on top of each other as God has just been building my faith in him over the last five years or so. And so back when I was in college, um, my boyfriend and I decided to take a break from each other. And this was our second official break. And if you listen to the love episode, which I think was episode two, you'll know that every break that we took, I decided to dive headfirst into my relationship with Christ. And at this time, I was also still going to that church that I mentioned in the episode as well. And I could just feel like God was doing this deep work in my heart. And the the church's mission statement also resonated with me because it was based off of the Great Commission that Jesus gives us in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. And if you're not familiar with it, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, And surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. And that word disciples, right? If you listen to episode three, I think, where we talked about what it's like being a Christian nowadays, the word disciple and Christian are almost synonymous. Um, So you can basically say like, therefore go and and make Christians right across the nations. So anyways, um, so missions was a large part of this church. And I loved it. And they were constantly sending people out, um, whether they be domestic or international. And I decided to join, go all in. And I felt like God was just speaking to me, telling me, it's time, girl. Like, it's time to trust him. Um, It's time for him to work in my life. And in order to go on this mission trip, I did, which is where I felt like God was leading me, I did have to join this church. And so I went through that process. And then I attended an interest session to go on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic. I don't, I don't know why I chose the Dominican Republic. I just, it just, yeah, I, what they were going to do there sounded cool. So um, let me pause here though also and tell you that I had never been on a plane by myself, um, let alone like I didn't even have a passport. Uh, I had never been out of the country, obviously. I knew no one at this church. No one 
I knew was going on this mission trip, but they all kind of knew each other. And so I sat there in this intro session, which felt a little bit like a family reunion. And I could have easily just dipped, um, like just slid out the back door somewhere. But I felt such conviction to stay and to go with this group. And again, I just felt like God was speaking to my heart, urging me to do this, to take this step in, in, in faith in him. And so the nice thing about this church is that they actually had a little bit of like financial help for students in order to go on mission trips. And so I didn't have to pay these, this like astronomical amount to go, but I also didn't, don't come from a lot of money. And so I had to figure out some way to get this money. Um, I also had to buy my passport, which was around 120 bucks at the time. And to be super honest with you, the whole thing is a blur. Like, I don't even know how I secured the amount that I needed. I just knew the whole time that God was going to work it out. If he's going to call me into this and this is where he wanted me to go, he's going to make a way. And so I kept pressing on and I just continued to be obedient and I continue to have faith that God is going to work it all out. And so fast forward a few months and I'm on a plane to the Dominican Republic with a bunch of strangers. And I was like a nervous wreck. Um, but also weirdly had this sense of calmness to me, which also, interestingly enough, in the other two examples I'm going to give you, um, I had a fim 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 like a similar uh, feeling. Uh, and I don't really talk about it in those instances, like, but I'm thinking of it now, like, I, I was a nervous wreck in both of those, but I still had this weird sense of calmness. And I think that's when you know it's like just the grace of God, right? But anyways, um, I digress. So I knew that this is where God wanted me to be. Um, these are the people that he wanted me to be around. This is the direction he wanted my life to head in all along. And I'll spare you the details right now um, of that entire trip just because it's not the point of this episode, but let's just say that it was the best experience of my life. I had these deep, meaningful conversations with people of God. Um, we led songs in both English and Spanish. And I'll never forget getting this beautiful depiction of heaven and just thinking this must be what it's going to be like. Um, and anyways, that was just like one of my favorite parts of the whole trip. And so I come back and uh, from the trip and I'm starting senior year of college. And during that time, um, the boyfriend and I reconciled. Uh, I know, I know. But if you listen to the love episode, you know how this ends. So anyways, um, I began to get this itch to travel again, uh, to start fresh, to step out in faith and trust that God's going to move for me like he did in the DR. And um, if I'm being honest, I almost became addicted to taking these like massive shadow steps according to God's plan for my life. Like whatever he had was better than whatever I was thinking. And so what will you have me do next, God? And somewhere within the spring semester, I got this idea to do my master's over in London. And I just wasn't ready for a proper career yet. And I just kept feeling like there was more, you know, more to this life, more to the world, more than I needed to see just more. And so I was trusting God on this, you know, knowing that if he calls me to this, he'll provide and it'll work out the way that it's supposed to. And I was just taking another shadow step. And by the absolute grace of God, I ended up getting everything in order and I was able to go. And there were a few hitches along the way. Um, I actually almost thought I wasn't going to have the money to go. And, but you know, we did it. God moved mountains and I was just in amazement and awe of him. And I was looking at this as a fresh start, time with God, time in a new place. I was so ready. But the funny thing is, um, I only went over there with like 200 pounds in my pocket. And if you don't know what pounds is, it's just the British currency. Um, but that was supposed to last me for four weeks until I got my student loan money. Uh, and I know, I know it sounds dumb and naive. I get it. But when I say God provides, you guys... He provides, okay? I had friends who would buy me dinner. Um, God, God, I'm not, this is so crazy. God blesses me with amazing cooks everywhere I go. Like every 
part of my life where I've had a change. Everywhere I go, I have a good cook around me <laughs> because if you know me, you know I'm not the best cook. And so my flatmate was an amazing cook. So I never went hungry. Thank you, Jesus. I had all my necessities. Um, I was able to make it last for the four weeks and then I was all set. And so what I didn't know though, going into that year was that God was really going to move in a major way and he was going to bring me closer to him than I had been in years. And now when I look back on it, I'm like, wow, like you're just so good, you know, and, um, I'll speed through that year that I was in London and I'll skip ahead to the Scottish Highlands, which is where God did move in a major way. This is where, quite honestly, I feel like I met God for the first time face to face. Um, so up until this point, I was getting closer and closer to God, but than I had been in a while. And uh, I would do these walks in the the hills or the mountain that was like behind the hostel I was working in. And I would just spend time in prayer, um, spend time worshiping him. You know, it's kind of my quiet time. And one, one day during, during my time on this mountain, uh, I was having, a, you know, this little praise and worship session. And it was as calm as the ocean on a calm day. There was no wind, no cloud in sight. And then all of a sudden, as I'm worshiping, I just feel this gust of wind come over me. And it kind of hung out for a little bit. I was like, what's happening? Um, and during that moment, I just felt God speak so clearly to my heart. It's time. Okay. Like, it's time to break up with this guy. It's time for you to give yourself fully to me. We're done with this. It's time. I won't have you dividing your attention anymore. And so I was just like convicted, right? You know, like, oh, it's time. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, we're going to do this. And if you know from the love episode, like we, I had been wanting to do it for a while. So it's not like this came out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, I began to descend from this mountain and I get a phone call from him. And I'm telling you this because it's vital to the story because he never called ever. He told me the second that I moved to Europe that I'd have to call because his schedule never changed and mine was kind of all over the place. And so I would have to be the one initiating the phone calls. So as soon as I got this phone call, I thought, wow, okay, God, you meant today. Like we're doing this now. Um, and so while I probably, while you're probably listening to this thing and like, girl, you should wait until you got back to the U S I just felt like God was like, nah, we don't have time for that. Um, we're going to do this now. And so I broke it off 10 years gone in a second. Um, but can I tell you that I felt nothing but peace, like so much. So I didn't even cry. I, I literally felt like I had just made the best decision of my life and that the best was yet to come. And so fast forward a few months and I had been home for a bit back in the U S and I was searching for a job and I can't even tell you the amount of rejections that I got, like just an overwhelming amount. Um, because it turns out if you spend a year in Europe, people would rather have work experience over cultural, but, um, I digress. So ended up finding this job. Um, and it was such a stretch, you guys, like such a stretch that there was absolutely no way I was going to get this job. I just knew it. But for some reason, I just felt like drawn to apply anyways. And I just sent a prayer up to God, you know, and I said, God, if this is your will, let it be done. And another fact that's necessary to add to this story is that it was based in Miami, Florida. The job was. And in all my job searches and applications, I was avoiding Florida like the plague. Um, I'm not big on humidity. I've always been more of a mountain girl and Florida's so flat, you know? And so I always just thought Florida's a no go for me like there, but here I was applying for this job. Um, and I, by the grace of God, after a few phone interviews, I was flown down to do this full in-person interview. Uh, and I couldn't believe it. Like I felt like I went through that day in such a haze and this company that I, you know, I could only dream about was interested in hiring me. But as the day went on, I just felt such imposter syndrome. Like I didn't feel like I knew anything close to what they were asking for. And I felt like I was so inadequate. And I just kept thinking, God, what am I doing here? Like, 
why do you have me here? This is so embarrassing. And I vividly remember uh, my mom picking me up from the airport when I got back. And first thing she asked when she when I get in the car is, well, how'd it go? And I said, it'll be a miracle if I get that job straight up. And then we didn't talk about it. And like, we didn't talk about it at all. And so a few days go by and I, normally I don't remember my dreams at all. Um, but there was this one night I had a dream that was so vivid and so clear that I actually woke up and I thought that it had happened. And I was like, whoa, like, what the heck? So I had a dream that I got a call from the HR guy, and he was telling me that they wanted me for this different position, and and I accepted it. And I just, I woke up, and I was just holding on to this hope. And I was like, God, if this is you speaking to me in my dream, like, if this is you, and it's true, like, what did I do to deserve this? You know, like nothing, but like, you know, your will, not my own, like, please God move that mountain. And sure enough, a few days later, (laughs) like, look at God. Okay. I get a phone call from the exact, like the exact dream became a reality. And I remember going back inside and sitting in the living room, telling my mom that I'm going to do whatever I need to, to make this happen. And this is also a good point to kind of slip in that I was running out of money So after getting back from Europe, um, I had to make a deposit on the Airbnb that I decided to stay in for three or four months down in Miami until I found a place. And basically I was just trying to see if I even wanted to stay in Miami, you know, it was kind of a test. Um, and that wiped me out almost. So I had about $200 when I went to Miami, (laughs) which similar story, right? Um, but I took a shadow step and I trusted God. I trusted that he would provide, he would lead the way, and I was just to follow him. And I knew that he was doing another work in my life, and he had not let me down yet, and so I was all in. I was like, let's go, let's do this. And to be honest with you, I barely survived those first few weeks. Um, And right before I got paid, I had about $8 in my bank account. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And my gas tank was almost on empty. (laughs) The reason I'm telling you that all these like minute details is because every single one ladders up to this like faith that I had in God. Um, Sure, yes, it had to do with circumstances and, you know, getting my paycheck. And yes, it was probably idiotic to make a move that far with little to no money. But I knew that God would provide everything that I needed. And here again, I found myself in a place with an amazing cook and someone who provided my nutrition. Dude, that's all that I needed, you know? And I'm telling you, it's so crazy because he's always looking out for the smallest details. Like nobody else looks out for details like that except God, trust me. And so then this is when the real fun happened because I relapsed a little bit and I began to sell my soul to the world again. And I bought into this job entirely, dude. I totally married this job. I traveled the world again. I began to turn to the things of this world again to fill me instead of God and God's word. I would go to church every now and again, but I never fully committed. Um, my allegiance was split. Like I was trying to serve both God and the world. And how many of you know it doesn't work that way? And so this all came to a head about a year and a half ago um, when I had a situation come up with my family. And in a weird way, it couldn't have come at a better time professionally because we were in the midst of a reorganization in our department. And so I was left with a choice. I could stay um, because I was offered a position to stay or I could take their very generous severance and leave to be with my family. If you know me, or as you get to know me through this podcast, you learn very quickly that family is my everything, uh, aside from God. And so to me, I didn't, this wasn't a choice. This was happening and I was leaving. And in that moment, I remember my heart being entirely broken and I was, I was so split. I was so in love with that job and I didn't really understand what was happening, but I, I could feel God's presence and I knew he was close. Um, and even though I was running from him again and I was selling my soul to the world again, he was right there waiting for me to come back and he had orchestrated everything perfectly. And I know that now, and you know how I know that 
is because through every decision I made and every place he's brought me to, it led me right to where I needed to be in that exact moment that I needed to be there. And it gave me everything that I needed to take care of what I needed to for my family. And it allowed me to come running back to God. And that this wasn't a coincidence. This was all design. This was all by design. And so if someone were to ask me today, why do you have faith in this God? My real, genuine answer is always going to be because I've put my trust in him when I didn't have anyone else to trust and anyone else to help me. And I've watched him move mountains and I have watched him carry me through. So no, I don't walk by sight because I can't see everything that's coming my way. I could have never predicted the last three years, but man, do I have faith. And boy, do I believe in a God who moves when we least expect it and when we need him to most. And I want to slip something in here real quick because I think it's necessary. When God took me out of that position, I spent two or three months at home um, not working, ended up getting a different job back in my hometown. And um, how about less than six to nine months later, the company I previously worked for, the entire department that I was working for collapsed. And I just look back at that and not going to (laughs) cry, but I just look back at that and I think, God, you pulled me out when you knew that I needed to be pulled out the most. And even though it was in the worst of circumstances and it was in the toughest situation I've probably ever been in my entire life, um, it was all by design. And so I love and live by that quote that Francis Chan said, where he says, but God doesn't call us to be in the comfortable. He calls us to trust him entirely, so completely that we are so unafraid to put ourselves in situations where we will be in trouble if he doesn't come through. And I think about and I reflect on the last five years of my life, and I just feel like this quote describes it entirely. I would have been in trouble several, several times if God didn't come through, if God didn't just, if I didn't just throw everything at him, lay it all at his feet and surrender and then watch him move and watch him do what he does best. And so I feel like those, these three instances were necessary to tell you because I want you to get to know me and I want you to get to know my heart for this, my heart for God. And I want you to, and I want to start it by going into some biblical truths. And so I hope now more than anything, you start to realize that faith in God also goes hand in hand with obedience. Have you noticed that trend? Every single step that I have been afraid to take, I took anyways, because I felt like that was what God was calling me to do. And I wanted to be obedient to him, even though my heart was split and I had a boyfriend or I was trying to live out my life according to this world. I still wanted to obey God because I knew all along that he knew what was best for my life. He still knows. And it just sometimes takes some humbling some broken down moments for him to restore us and to bring us back to where we need to be. And so faith, what is it really? How do you, how do you get it and keep it? And how do you grow in it? And these are all great questions. There's so much to dive into. And I'm really excited because I really just, I love this topic. And so I want to start with the basics, um, a definition, if you will, <laughs> of what faith is and what faith isn't. Faith is, and so the only real straightforward definition of faith in the Bible can be found at the beginning of Hebrews 11. And it says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And throughout Hebrews 11, you'll see that faith is all about actions and behaviors, faithful actions and obedience. We have this confidence and this assurance for the things hoped for and the things unseen. Faith is this overall experience that you have when you get a taste of the reality of the substance or the thing that you've been hoping for. And so what what is what faith isn't is it's not just this mental state or this blind faith. 
And I realized actually, um, after listening to Tim Mackey kind of describe what faith is and what faith isn't, um, that I had actually been saying that for years, this blind, you know, that, that faith in God is, is this sort of blind faith, but this is such a misconception of Christianity. Blind faith is actually really stupid. Blind faith means that there's no good reason to believe in something. And if there's no good reason to believe in something, don't. Don't believe in it. But for Christ followers, we can look to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, where he tells us in verse 6, After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. And he's speaking of the resurrection of Christ, that after he rose from the grave, he appeared before over 100 witnesses. And he goes on in verse 12 to say, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. And so faith starts with reason. Do we have absolute certainty? No. Do we have a reason to believe? Yes, we have a great reason to believe that this man, Jesus, existed some 2,000 years ago and was resurrected from the dead. And so consider this. One of the first things you see Abraham do when he was put in a situation of faith was to reason. He sat down and he thought about it. In Hebrews 11, verse 11, it says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. And if you don't know the rest of the story, head on over to Genesis 22. It'll tell you how it ends. But you see, Abraham knew that God was faithful. He knew that he hadn't let him down yet and that obedience and faith in him had never led him astray. So he trusted that if this is what God wanted him to do, he reasoned that God would come through in the end. He had faith that God would be faithful. And so you see, we have to have a good reason to follow Jesus. And we do. We have this testimony, these testimonies about his life, death, and resurrection. This appeals to our reasoning as human beings. And by faith, we begin with a reason to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Whether or not, however, you do anything with your faith is a sign of your obedience to God. Because faith is action, and then knowing the one who calls you into it is faithful. And so faith and obedience go hand in hand. Faith should always, should essentially reframe how you think about obedience, which I'm going to do a whole podcast episode on, so stay tuned for that. But where are we at? How are we feeling? You know, it's a lot, right? And so a bunch of people saw the resurrection of Jesus. We can't see it, but we trust in this in these testimonies. Faith is this transfer of trust in the things that we can't see to this God who can see everything. And so when you experience God's faithfulness, faithfulness, much like I have in the instances I just told you about, you know what it feels like. It is undeniable. Basically, we have been called to live this very counterintuitive lifestyle. We know that a new creation is on the way. And so while we live in this sort of limbo land, we have faithful obedience to God. And I want to add that we should embrace people's questions about things we, that we believe and we put our faith in. It's okay to poke and to prod and to question all the things of the Bible. Trust me, God's going to give you an answer. So just ask him. Open up that dialogue and ask those hard-hitting questions and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Have these conversations with other people in the community. Let him give you wisdom and knowledge that you can never gain on your own. Let him show you what being faithful and obedient to him looks like. And then as you learn, begin to live it out daily. 
It should be said, though, that sometimes faith will lead to victory and triumph, and other times it's hard, it's messy, and it requires a level of grit and determination that you're going that you're going to hang on to at any cost, because the one that you follow is and always will be faithful. You guys, God is in ultimate control. He will always keep his promises, whether in this life or in the next. And in many instances, you may not receive the miracle that you've been holding out for, but tough faith is a constant commitment to hang on and believe God at all against all the odds, no matter what. Um, so how are we doing? <laughs> Do we feel like... Um, we understand faith a little bit better. <laughs> I hope the answer is yes. I hope that you read Hebrews 11 for yourself because honestly, it's jam-packed with all sorts of instances of amazing faith. And so I love that verse. It says, you know, we fix our eyes on the things that are unseen for what is unseen is eternal in 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Um, and this life is temporary, guys. You know, like live it for God. Store up all your treasure in heaven. Be faithful. Be obedient to his calling for your life. Because I promise you, he's going to do more than you could ever imagine and you could ever do on your own. So take that step of faith. Take Step out in faith. You know, and honestly, I've had a lot of people tell me before that they couldn't do what I did. That they couldn't just up and move and risk everything with little to no, to no money and just hope that it all works out. And I highly disagree with that. I think that if you believe in God and you love him with all of your heart and you have faith that he is the God that he says he is, then he's going to provide for you. He's not going to let you down and for because you're following the will that he has for your life. And yes, I've been in situations where I'm like, um, God, I don't know if this is going to work out or not. Uh, but then I have to remind myself daily who God is, how he's come through time and time again. And so no matter what, that is the faith that I have in him. That's the hope that I have in the things that are unseen. And so again, <laughs> I hope you got something out of all my rambling. I hope that you'll continue on this journey with me. I really do. Next week, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, be talking about the stages of faith in part two, again, of this three-part series. So stick around. I really don't want you to miss it. And as always, if you like what you're hearing, you want to stick around, um, please subscribe and follow A Girl in the Word podcast over on Instagram. Just to keep up to date, join the community and let's fellowship with one another. Let's grow in Christ together. Let's have those conversations and, you know, those. let's ask each other questions, you know. Um, so I will see you next time. I pray that you have a great week. God bless.